Okay, we're going to start a new unit, and in this unit we're going to discuss the gas laws. What that means is we're going to look how gases are used to investigate chemical reactions and physical processes. What we're going to do is start talking about the units for pressure, which we've talked about in a previous podcast, so we'll go over those pretty quickly. And then we'll talk about how we measure pressure. And when we do that, we will then take those concepts and apply it to different properties of gases. The first step in this process then is making sure we understand first of all what pressure is and what the units for pressure are. Now we've covered this in a previous vodcast so I'm going to go over this pretty quickly. First of all the unit for pressure that we typically use is going to be atmospheres but there are other units like we've talked about before. We've got pascals and kilopascals and then we've got millimeters of mercury and tors. So the relationship is one atmosphere is equal to 101.3 kilopascals or 101,000 pascals which is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury and the same value for tors also. So remember pressure is equal to force over area so if you have a large area say 500 meters squared with a certain force over it that pressure is going to be decreased because you have such a large denominator if you want to increase the pressure you can do two things decrease the area or increase the force if you need a refresher on the units of pressure again go to that podcast where we talked about units of pressure earlier okay as we study pressure we use a few devices to measure pressure and one of them is referred to as a barometer you've probably heard barometer measurements in weather reports before they're usually listed in inches of mercury but the unit that we use is millimeters of mercury so let's just take a quick look at how a barometer works basically you've got a pool of mercury here and you have an inverted tube into the mercury so the bottom of this tube would actually be probably down around there somewhere and then what happens is inside the tube there's a vacuum so as air pressure pushes down on the surface of this mercury this here is all open again this is this is like a tub so as air pressure pushes down on the mercury the mercury is forced up the tube so as air pressure increases it'll push the mercury further and further up the tube so normal atmospheric pressure pushing down on this mercury will push the mercury 760 millimeters up that tube so if you could measure the distance from there to there it would measure 760 millimeters so that's where the term or the unit millimeters of mercury comes from so if you're trying to figure out what atmospheric pressure is you're just looking at that tube and then measuring the distance from wherever the mercury is to the bottom of that tube and that distance in millimeters or inches or centimeters or any length unit for that matter will give you the air pressure in millimeters of mercury inches of uh, mercury or centimeters of mercury the next instrument we use is called a monometer and what that measures typically is gas pressure either within a cylinder or I should say within a container or you can also use it to measure atmospheric pressure so there's open manometers and closed manometers these two here are representing open manometers in other words air pressure is pushing down on this column of mercury which is then going to push the column of mercury up in this direction so if you have a gas in your cylinder here the gas is going to be moving through the column so it'll essentially be pushing down on the column of mercury here while air pressure is pushing down on the column of mercury here so if this column is higher than this column it means the gas inside the container is able to push against atmospheric pressure by a certain amount and that certain amount would be equal to that height so the pressure of the gas here 
let me rewrite this so it's a little bigger, the pressure of the gas is going to be equal to the pressure of the air plus the height of the column. So if atmospheric pressure were 760 millimeters of mercury, and you would need to know that, you would add that column or that height of that column to your 760 to get the pressure of the gas. On the other side here, you see that the gas pressure pushing against the column is less than atmospheric pressure. In other words, atmospheric pressure is able to push down on that column and push it back towards the gas. So here, the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere minus the height of the column. Okay, so that's a short podcast just introducing the gas laws in terms of the, the units for pressure and barometers and manometers. So you should understand and be able to explain how a barometer is used to measure air pressure and then how a manometer is used to measure either air pressure or the pressure of a gas within, inside a container. Email your questions to Hannon and Chemistry at gmail and we will talk again in the next lesson in this unit.